This is the Gadget Flow Podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to chat with Rob Wilson, and Rob is the co-founder of CrowdReach and Crowdfunding Champions, and he specializes in researching and releasing everything that makes a successful crowdfunding campaign. I love this interview, and I really think you will too, so without further ado, here is my interview with Rob Wilson. All right, I am here with Rob Wilson. Rob, how are you doing this morning? I guess it's afternoon for you. It's not morning for you. <laughs> how are you doing this afternoon? Is, yeah, off, off, afternoon on a Friday. Thank you, and good morning to you. Uh, it's great to be here. Awesome, man. Well, for people who may not know who you are, or what you do, can you just give, you know, a snapshot of of who you are and what you do? Of course. So I got involved in crowdfunding back in 2014 when I co-founded uh, CrowdReach, uh, which is an online advertising agency that specializes in Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaigns. And more recently, I set up Crowdfunding Champions, which is an online resource for entrepreneurs to learn from successful crowdfunding campaigns. Nice. Cool, man. So it's my understanding that you are, well, I have a few questions based on this, but um, I know you're a pretty young guy. How old are you? Uh, 23. 23. Okay. So a question I always like to ask is what was your career? Like what is someone's career before getting into crowdfunding? But it, I don't know if you had one. <laughs> I mean, what, what was, what, what was your, I just want to hear about your journey, your journey to getting to, to crowdfunding and why you thought it was interesting, why you thought there was opportunity there. Maybe touch on that a little bit, like before we jump into the current state of where you're at, like um, how you got there a little bit. Yeah, Sure. Um, so I got involved in crowdfunding whilst I was actually studying at university. So I was studying uh, entrepreneurship and that's where I met my two co-founders. Um, as part of the course, we were required to run certain business projects throughout the year. And one of those business projects that we got involved with uh, was helping a, a startup to launch their product on Kickstarter. So mm. we, did, uh, we did a lot of research uh, to understand, you know, we, we had nothing, we had no clue about Kickstarter. So it was really understanding what Kickstarter was, how it works, and what you needed to do to, uh, to launch a successful campaign. So a lot of time and effort went into that. Um, it paid off. We, uh, we had a really successful campaign. And once we finished that campaign, we, we saw an opportunity to help other, um, other entrepreneurs to launch their products on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and uh, that's when we when we launched CrowdReach. Awesome, that's awesome, man. So, okay, so you launch you launch CrowdReach, and you come out of school, and then you build um, crowdfunding champions. That's essentially the how it went for you guys, or did you just kind of decide to do it then as crowdfunding champions? Just you? How did that come to be? So uh, we've we've been launching uh, crowd we've been so we've been running CrowdReach now for a few years, um, and okay. it's just been uh, recently that I've been involved with a lot of workshops and a lot of talks. Uh, you know, I'm really keen on on uh, um, educating entrepreneurs and helping them to to launch campaigns. And there was one thing that mm. uh, I always felt was missing, and that was uh, the research in the space. So I'd often try and find, um, you know, answers to certain questions. And when I found that there wasn't anything out there, all I could find was was industry reports and academic papers. But there was nothing really that was providing creators with practical research that they could apply. And so I then decided that um, it would be a good idea for us to launch a survey um, of the, the top uh, campaigns on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And what we did was we, we conducted this, this survey and we put it together in a port, report and it was really to provide our clients with a, with a resource um, and they found it really useful. And so since then, I've decided to you know, set it up independently and we've just recently published our 2018 report, which looks at the most successful campaigns from last year. Yeah, I think that is awesome, man, because I think it's true that um, 
I think it, and there's such a wide range of things you could do um, in launching a campaign. And I think you guys kind of doing the research, the hard work, the, the nitty gritty of discovering what worked and what hasn't. I mean, that's so valuable to people. Yeah. So, so you just, you just launched this report. Talk about that a little bit. Like what, what exactly does it cover? Sure. Um, so what we really wanted to do initially with the first report was to uncover the secrets behind uh, the success of the, of the top campaigns. So you quite often see the headlines of you know the six figure plus campaigns, but you don't often uh, hear the story behind the um, you know the successful campaign. Uh, to understand exactly what that creator did, you know months before the campaign, what they did during, what worked, what didn't work. And so what this uh, report does is it brings together all of that. So it looks at preparation, so what uh, creators did before they launch. Um, it's uh, looking a lot at the marketing, so what type of channels did creators use, how effective they were, how much did uh, creators spend on marketing. Um, and you know all of these things together to provide a, a snapshot for uh, you know, launching a, a six figure plus campaign. Yeah. So out of curiosity, how some of that information is kind of hard to get, like, <laughs> like knowing how much money someone spends on ads or whatever. How did you, how do you get that information? Do you just like call the creator and ask? Um, so firstly, what we did was we first, um, you know, looked at all of the campaigns that successfully raised a hundred K or more, um, on Kickstarter and Indiegogo in the design and technology category. And so once we had uh, you know, that sort of database, we then went through and we contacted each and every one of them, inviting them to uh, you know, fill out our survey. And the way that we pitched this was that you know, this is going to be a free resource um, for creators. And really, we want to help you know, the whole industry to, to launch more successful campaigns. So it's really in everyone's interest that you know, they, they fill out um, the, the survey, they be as honest as possible so that we can collect all of that data, put it together and provide a really valuable resource for, for other creators. Definitely, man. Um, this is kind of a pivot, but I, I mean, you're a young entrepreneur and I think that's interesting about you. And so who are some entrepreneurs or business owners or people out there um, making cool stuff that you follow or inspire? Like who are some of the people who you, you know, follow a lot and, and think, I, I want to be kind of like them? Um, oh, there's, there's a lot really. Um, I, I wouldn't really put it down to one. You know, there, there's a lot of uh, successful entrepreneurs that I follow listening to their, to their podcasts um i'm you know a, a big fan of of tim ferris and his work um especially you know looking at the podcast where he's interviewing you know a whole host of successful people so you get a real uh you know sort of rounded um you know experience of of all these different uh, entrepreneurs tim ferris is an interesting guy on his own but i think his like one of the greatest parts about him is his ability to ask the right questions to the right person at the right time. Like, I think yes. those interviews are just so interesting and full of, like, I can't tell you how many times I've listened to, you know, a single guest that he's had on, but I've just listened to that episode over and over and over because it's just so mm. full of good stuff. So I think it's so interesting as well, how, if you look at his journey, you know, if you look back at, you know, the first few uh, podcasts, there's such a difference between the way he is now and the confidence he has. And, you know, he's really evolved in his interviewing oh, yeah. skills over time. Totally, man. He's like when we, yeah, he's, he's awesome, dude. So um, what, here's kind of a, another random question, but what is the worst piece of advice you hear about crowdfunding? Maybe something you'd like to debunk as uh, not very valuable, but you hear often. Oh, um, good question. Um, I don't think I really, really have a, a a straight answer to that. I think just to to give a a, a different answer really um, would be preparation. Um, I guess there is still some naivety around what uh, is involved in a successful campaign, um, and as I mentioned before quite often you will see a, um, a, a campaign like right at its peak. Um, I don't know if you've seen before, there's, uh, there's a great picture that sort of explains this, it's the, um, the iceberg of success. And you know, most of the time you only see 
you know, the, the, the top of that iceberg, but you don't see, you know, the years of preparation and the hard work and the grit and determination that that is beneath that. Um, so I think it's exactly the same with with crowdfunding campaigns. And, um, you know, one of the questions that we asked in our survey this year was um, to give one piece of advice to uh, other creators looking to, to launch a, a real successful campaign. And one of the key themes here was was preparation. You know, it's understanding who your target market is. It's doing the research um, into other campaigns to understand, you know, how they uh, they how they did it. Um, and the, the big thing as well, it, it's building up that community before launch. So in both of our reports, uh, a key finding is that uh, these creators build up subscriber lists before launch. They're able to then, uh, you know, launch a campaign and already have people waiting to back. Um, one interesting thing as well that we asked this year in our survey is the conversion rates of these email subscribers. And now why this is interesting is because what you can do is you can um, sort of reverse engineer it. And so you can then understand exactly uh, the value of a subscriber list and uh, how much is likely to be uh, raised you know just through that that list um, so you can then have a good understanding of how much you're likely to raise you know in the first 24 hours um, so that's really useful for uh, for creators to understand what the average uh, conversion rate is yeah i i think that's really interesting and a, and a cool answer because i think there's been a theme um in a lot of the interview interviews we've done for this show and every time i've asked a question like that or when i ask what the biggest mistake people make um in preparing for their campaign is i, I don't know if there's ever been a time where the answer wasn't preparation mm. um and i th i just feel like people don't y I, you said it yourself like they're just naive to what it actually takes to have a successful campaign. Mm -hmm. What are some ways to fight that? Would you say like, what are a few ways that you can prepare? Like if you had to say, um, you know, one or two, three things that you need to prepare in order to have a successful campaign um, to someone just starting out, what would those things be? Um, so the big one, as I mentioned, you know, building up that community, but I guess before that is the, research and looking at the product that you're looking to to bring to Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Um, so this was another big theme that we found uh, that came out of, uh, of our advice question. And one particular creator summed this up really well, and I completely agree with them. And they said, you know, not every product is eligible to raise, you know, six figures. And I think, you know, that is completely true. And what we find uh, at CrowdReach, you know, we get a lot of inquiries and there's a lot of creators that come to us and say, I want to raise X amount. And, you know, you look at the product, you do some research, you look at similar products that have launched before that. And quite honestly, you then question whether or not that target is actually realistic. So, you know, it's doing the, the research, it's looking at similar products that have, um, that have launched in the past um, and really trying to understand, um, you know, who's backing these campaigns and what's worked for them. Right. Where do you see crowdfunding five years from now? I think one thing that uh, has been interesting looking at, you know, since I got involved in crowdfunding back in 2014, is really the, the shift from uh, a campaign being seen as a fundraiser to a campaign being seen as a, a pre-commerce and a, you know, a, a launch of the product. And I guess evidence of this is the, uh, the marketing budget. Mm. So, you know, of the creators that we looked at in both years quite, you know, consistently, the, the average uh, marketing spend is around $50,000. Um, so, you know, there's the serious money going in, into these campaigns. And it is interesting as well when you look at the average target, which is actually less than the, um, than the marketing spend. So it does just show that it's not about a creator coming to the platform and asking for a certain amount of money in order to create the product. It's so much more than that. So I guess that's one thing. Another thing that we're seeing is uh, creators returning to the platform, which is really interesting. Um, so, you know, we find with most of our clients now, if they have a successful campaign and they're able to deliver on their promises, and you know the backers are happy with the uh, the product that they've received then the chances are they're going to come back a few months time you know with a new new product or a, or a newer version 
And what, what's interesting there is that they're able to utilize their existing community. So you do see the creators, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's uh, easy. Well, it, it's definitely easy. I'm not saying it's, it's easy, um, but at least they're able to leverage that existing community and get that early momentum. And so, you know, once you have a, a few campaigns, you know, uh, done and dusted, then, you know, the process and, you know, it, it should um, all, all go from there. Totally. I've seen that happen before. I, I really like these guys. Their company is called Studio Neat, and they, they make a lot of really cool products. And, and they're uh, they're 100 percent crowdfunding. All their products are crowdfunded. Um, but they had a, a lot of success early on doing that. And it just seems like now, every time they put out a new product that's, you know, um, on Kickstarter, it just seems like so much of their pre-existing community just buys it without even thinking about it because they make good stuff and they follow through on their promises. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and, and people are invested in them because they, they feel part exactly. of, of that company. Um, and just, just to throw in a, um, a, a quick sort of stat there. So one thing that we found was really interesting was that we had 19 um creators that were able to raise were able to have more launch sorry more than one uh six figure plus campaign last year and we actually had two uh creators that launched three uh six figure plus campaigns in a single year so it does just show you know some of these creators are, are really you know nailing it and uh, they know exactly what they're doing yeah definitely man so i have two more questions for you this is one that i always think about and i and always trips me up and i think it trips up a lot of people when they are uh you know in the middle of their campaign what is something that your research tells you or your experience tells you to keep the momentum up throughout the entirety of your campaign obviously there's the huge bump at the beginning and the bump at the end but what do you do in the middle to make it interesting to more people um to get into your campaign yeah, great question. Um, so, yeah, as you alluded to this, yeah, what normally happens is you, you get the sort of classic U-shape uh, funding graph. So there is normally a spike uh, at the start of the launch. Uh, that's mainly down to the, the existing community or the community that the creators built up before launch. And then uh, it's also the, the sort of the last week because it's that urgency. You know, this is your last chance to uh, to get you know, the, the special price or the product, whatever it is. Um, so I think, um, you know, one thing that is really effective uh, is online advertising. Um, and again, it's something that we found in, in the research. And interestingly, uh, this time round, what we actually found was that um, Facebook ads were said to be the main source of pledges for most of the creators that we, we interviewed. Uh, so Facebook ads can be a really effective way of driving traffic and, you know, creating new uh, new backers. Um, so it's definitely, I'd say, the most effective way of uh, keeping that momentum. I think one piece of advice that I would give is that make sh to make sure that your product has the the margins in in order to um, in order for you to be able to uh, to to run paid ads um, because it, it you know it can be costly. And if you don't have the margins or you have a particularly cheap product, then you may find it difficult to, you know, get um, get conversions in um, at a profitable uh, rate. Yeah. Uh, where can people stay up to date with you and what you're up to? Um, so I guess the best place to uh, direct people to is Crowdfunding Champions. So it's crowdfundingchampions.com. And if you head over to that website, you'll be able to find our two uh, reports. Uh, which look at you know the most successful um, tech and design campaigns on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So there's a whole load of uh, of research and stats there for creators to learn from. Awesome. Well, Rob, thank you so much for being on the show, man. I I think I learned a ton from listening to you, and I know a lot of other people will um, as well. So yeah, and I'll make sure to include links to all your stuff in the show notes so people can go check you guys out, follow what you're doing. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being on, Rob. Absolute pleasure. That was my interview with Rob Wilson. Please make sure to go check out Crowdfunding Champions to see that full report. It's an incredibly useful resource for really anyone looking to start a crowdfunding campaign, so you're crazy if you don't go get it. So head over to crowdfundingchampions.com to pick it up, 
Thanks for being on the show, Rob. This podcast is made by GadgetFlow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to check out the site for all the new products we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode, so in the meantime, please go rate and review our show on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening to the GadgetFlow podcast. Podcast.